Let's talk about potentially overall the best hero in Overwatch 2 and maybe one of the best heroes in Overwatch's lifespan altogether. Ana is an insanely strong character that is very fun to play. My, um, well, maybe my favorite support to play. Well, I, I scrimmed so much Brig back in the day that, like, Brig has just been hammered into my head. But I played a little bit of Ana in Contenders 2, played a map against uh, Montreal Rebellion, got that dub. Um, so, yeah, Ana's really, really fun. I hit rank 11 on her and Brig last season. Um, so I've got my fair share of time on Ana. Let's see all modes. Ana's actually my, wow, wow. Ana's actually my fourth most played hero. I love playing her. She's insanely fun and she's a super, super powerful character that can dictate entire games. You can do everything on this hero. So if you're learning support, Ana absolutely should be in your arsenal. So if you're new to the channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button. I'd appreciate having you guys around for more guides like this one. And let's get started. So her biotic rifle. Number one, 75 damage or 75 healing each shot. When it's unscoped, this is very important. It shoots a projectile, right? As you can see, there's a travel time there. However, when you are scoped in, it is hit scan, instantaneous travel. So targets that are low HP, generally you want to be scoped in for it to heal unless you put yourself at risk, which I'll talk about positioning. When you want to scope in later, for example, say those are enemies poking me there, I would back inside out of their line of sight and scope in because if you are scoping in, you are an easy target to hit. So you have to be very careful with that. What's good about this is you can kind of strafe and heal if you have good aim, but if somebody's in trouble, generally I like to scope in and look for the, the quick scope or something of the sort to, to get them back up. So that's a biotic rifle, 75 healing per 0.58 second or 75 damage point for 0.58, which means you can two tap tracer. Really, really strong. Ability number two is the sleep dart, which against tracer, it will sleep for five seconds, right? One, two, three, four, five. It does a little bit of impact damage, right? However, they recently nerfed it so that against tanks like Ramaksha, Winston, anything like that, the duration is only 3.5 seconds. So, ready? One, two, three, and they're back, right? So, tanks get slept for a shorter duration. I'm not sure how long that change will stay in the game, but it was designed to make tank feel a little bit less... Uh, that's awful to play at times. So yeah, that's Sleep Dart. Very basic ability. Good skill shot. Can shut down ultimates all the time. Really, really good. You generally want to conserve that for when enemies are actually diving you. But if you start to snowball the fight and you're starting to win, you can look for aggressive Sleep Darts on enemy tanks or DPS to set up playmaking for your team. Her next ability is insanely powerful. It is Biotic Grenade. You throw the grenade and it applies this heal buff effect to your teammates, meaning they receive 50% more healing for the like three second duration that it's up. It is super, super strong. So whenever your tank or somebody is critical or you see somebody about to be dove, you want to throw the nade on big impact areas. So for example, we're going to let our teammates get the crit over here, right? And look at what happens. They're low, they're low, they're low. They're about to die. Boom, toss a nade, one, two, both max health immediately. It's insanely strong on tanks, and also, it's very good to look to use aggressively when teams don't have dive comps. If they are playing Reinhardt and they don't have any flankers, you almost always want to look for aggressive nades into their team that you can combo damage onto like that to just uh, get two shots off, quickly kill a squishy, and it's insanely good. So, Biotic Grenade, I'm going to do a little gameplay to show you guys what you need to look to do after this uh, little discussion we're having. And then, one of the most powerful ultimates in the history of Overwatch, Nano Boost. It builds insanely fast, so you want to be using it proactively. And it also will almost full heal a target. I think it heals 250 HP. 250 or, or, or 300, I'm not sure. Bottom line is, when you're Nano Boosted, you do 50% more damage and take 50% less with a full heal on squishies. It is the the combo of combo ultimates. It's infamous for the combos like Nano Blade or many other things. It is insanely powerful and it builds very quickly. So you want to be using Nano Boost really, really proactively and using it to save your teammates if you need to. So we'll talk about the, like how you want to use these abilities when we get into a game and I start explaining the, some of the stuff you want to look for as Ana. But looking for those nades in the middle of the fight is usually what I've found to be best because let, let the resource exchange kind of happen and just read their cooldowns, right? Read for when that Ryan drops a shield to toss a nade in there or look for the sleep and, and play back, play safely. So let's get into a game and I'm going to talk about a little bit of live action Ana gameplay and how you can become a really, really good Ana. Junker Town defense. Okay, so this is a good this is a good map potentially for Ana to show. I mean, obviously an owl. I don't think she's gonna get played or pro play, but this is a good map to at least showcase like what Ana's capable of. Like a big mistake so many Ana players make is they don't 
properly play the range that this character is able to play. And they play very close. They always play in high risk areas. But to maximize Ana, you need to know what high risk areas are, right? When to play in them and when to aggress and when to play safe to bait dives. Like what good Ana's will do, and you'll see ML do this all the time, is they'll just play in crazy positions like up top here, right? So for example, I'm not saying you should play up top here, but you know, if say they don't have a sniper and they're just playing full dive, right? And your whole team is playing this choke, there's no reason to not play up here because you can actually see better up here and how are they going to dive you, okay? Say they wrap around this way, well, then you just drop into your team over here and get healed with your other support, right? So I might actually start up here depending on what their comp is, right? Because if their comp's like a, a, a close quarter comp and they don't have snipers that I have to worry about, then, you know, maybe I will go play lower or if they have snipers and I don't want to play the high ground where the Widow can go over here, then I'll just drop and play on the close left side. But I want to see what their comp is first, and I'll, I'll consider dropping. A lot of people play on this, but I just kind of want to see what's going on. Well, no, nah, we'll go. So we'll take a gander. We're in quick play. We'll take a little bit of a gander, make sure I can keep my widow alive. So I'll take this angle just to start it off. I hear what? Eva, soldier, right? Uh, Mercy. Uh, okay, sojourn. So I can actually just play back here and take a look at this. Ready, guys? This is where I'm going to play, where the, where the soldier can't really poke me that well. But look at like, what what hero on their team could duel me besides their Ana, who won't be able to shoot me through their entire team. And I'm doing my job just as... What the hell was this? Who did that? It's still going. I'm going to take a little bit wider of an angle, tell my team to group up. But like, look at this. For example, like in high-rated lobbies, like I'm not saying you should always play back here, by the way. Because understanding that at the times, like you can just play it like... Dude, it sounds like there's a ball rolling around. Oh, D.Va. Oh, D.Va. Why do you do this? So I toss my nade when I see my D.Va getting crit. And I want to toss my nade in the big impact areas of the fight. Right? And look at this. I'm, I'm just not at risk over here. Now, if their soldier wants to try to get me, I might have to drop a little bit lower earlier, right? Because I don't want to walk up the high ground. Oh, my goodness, Reaper. Come on, pal. My team is not aware, though. That's the problem. But I'm going to move down this way. And look at this angle. I'll keep my brig alive. Healing my brig is the most important thing that I can do. Oh, Widow. Um, I see my widow over here. Stop strafing me, dog. Here we go. My diva's playing in a bad spot. Oh, she got bombed. And look at this. I've just been at no risk this whole time. Like, they, they haven't really been able to walk anywhere, right? I'm just able to sit back here. Oh, now I want to look to sleep. We're in the old exchange. I'm going to get the sleep on him, and I save my sleep dart for that, right? And they him next, right where my diva is. Nano my reaper in the process. Oh, it's going to go short, and I just chill, right? Look at her trying this. Look at her trying this. And now we're gonna burn him. I'm gonna save my sleep dart. Okay, my Reaper is gonna be crit. My Brig should be able to pack this guy. Oh, I was a little bit short there to help my Diva. Pocket my Reaper as he ults. Keep my baby Diva alive in the, in the process. And look at this, guys. My positioning here is perfect. Right? What can their comp do to me? And I'm able to output so much stats that they cannot break the choke. Now they swap to Somber Doom. Now that they swap Somber Doom, look where I'm gonna wrap. Right? I'm gonna play up top here. So if the summer wants to come in, I can drop, but it's much harder for their doom to dive. But I'm gonna play here where I can see this widow. Leave us back in mech. If summer wants to come for me, she has to cross the whole map, and my widow's already free shooting at their whole team, right? Oh, I missed him. No, I didn't miss him. Okay, we're good. But look what I can do. I just pocket him. Right? I have line of sight of everything, and I'm just denying everything. I'm gonna try to heal my widow up. And let's see if I can get a big nade on their on their team. I do get a nade there, and I can nade the choke when they walk. I'm gonna set up here again. My brig really wants to take a duel against a doom inside there. That's just not what you need to be doing. Uh, brig, come on. Okay, there we go. She's back now. I'm not gonna, I'm just not gonna be able to help her in there. A Reaper's gonna die sadly. He's gonna have visor soon. Oh, Brig, don't do that, please. While my Brig's inting over on that side, I'm gonna wrap to the right so I have a more linear line of sight of this area, right? And then I can just walk right back up high ground should I need to. So now when their team's starting to spawn back in, I'm already walking back up high ground so when the fight starts, I'll be set up. Oh, Brig. Oh, Brig. Oh, break. Just stay here. Stay where I can heal you. There's the nade. My Widow's gonna get two. And look at this setup. So many Ana players would just play right here on their team. And it's like, why? Right? Why? I mean, I, like, why Why play where the Somber Doom can easily dive you when you can just set up way in the back and be undoable? And the soldier's gonna have visor, so I play close to this and I'm gonna look to Nano somebody earlier. He's gonna jump my Widow. He's gonna be one, though, when he jumps in. I'm gonna DPS the Mercy out of the sky. Or at least make her think twice about peeking. Soldier's on point. I'm going to try to toss the nade on him. I do get the anti on the soldier. I'm going to nano my, my reaper so he doesn't die in there. Right, we're going to get two. So when, when the doom dive comes in, I guess nano it, right? 
and then, and then my, my widow gets dove, I nade, I nade her. Like, I use my, I always, always, and I cannot stress this enough, always use your high impact ability on the dive as it happens. You can completely deny dives, and it's almost like if they dive you, <coughs> excuse me, you hit them with an Uno reverse card. They'll just lose because your team is heal buff. They have nano. There's so many tools you can use. And look, I just want us a fight that took. If you do that every fight, right? Anytime there's a big dive, I was leaning to be looking for my widow because I knew the Sombra's timing was there, right? Oh my god. Oh, I'm, he might land on me. So I'm going to start rapping this way. I try to nade. Briggs probably going to die. Try to keep my diva alive. I think my Reaper's dead in your way. Heal my baby diva. Heal my baby diva. If he has a Sombra, she's got no treads locator. I missed the shots. I missed the shots. Madonna's trying to duel me now. Summer should be one. Heal my diva up. She's going to go on the Ana now. Oh, they see nine. It, it, guys, it doesn't get better than that. It doesn't. Look at my diva saying no. Right? It doesn't get better than that. Zero deaths. 6k healing for five minutes with 1,300 damage. So I'd average 2,600 damage with like 11,000 healing per 10. It doesn't get better than that stat line. And I used my nano, my nade, on those big impact dives. And I only let my Widow die a single time to the Sombra. Slept the vibes from that angle. I was at no risk the entire time. And if you want to climb on Ana and learn how to climb, if you do that in gold or silver, you will win every game. You will just win every single game. That's a great way to do Ana. I hope you guys learned something. Thank you so much for watching. Take it into your games. Go climb. She's the most fun hero ever put in Overwatch, in my opinion. I love her. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hit that sub button if you're new. And comment down below for what guy I should do next. Take care.